This just in. Breaking news! Our top story tonight, Ripple co-founder Chris Larson surpasses Bill Gates as the richest man in the world. Which makes sense because Ripple bringing everyone computers, it's kind of hard to say. Next up, the cryptocurrency Dogecoin has surpassed the 1 billion dollar market cap. You just can't seem to escape this thing these days. BitConnect takes a massive hit as Texas issues them a cease and desist. YouTubers are already flocking to the platform to let their users know to avoid the scam. In Texas, when you got a big connect account, you need to download a VPN. And finally tonight, Bank of America's branch Merrill Lynch is blocking users from investing in Bitcoin. Banned for Bank of America? Don't worry, Bitcoin, you're in good company. All of this and more tonight on Crypto News. Before we jump into things today, guys, I do want to say that this is honestly the most excited I've been to make videos in a long time. There's so much potential in this space to grow, and I'm excited to take on this new challenge and build this channel by putting out as many great videos as I possibly can. So if you want to be part of that, make sure to hit the subscribe button and join the team. Let's jump over and take a look at some trends in price over the last couple of days and week in the cryptocurrency markets. First up, Bitcoin getting a healthy rally going, moving towards 17,000. I know Bitcoin hasn't been getting much movement and everyone's been jumping on these alt trains, but don't forget what got us here. Bitcoin, still the largest coin, still has put the framework for us to be here today, has by far the most uh, exposure to the markets in terms of how many people actually know about these various coins. So don't look past Bitcoin. That's not to say we aren't seeing some gains being made across the board in the top five or 10 coins. Obviously, Ripple been on quite the run lately, despite a bit of a downturn recently. Ethereum breaking $1,000 briefly before falling back under. Bitcoin Cash continuing to do absolutely nothing. Cardano, after a massive run up, is now again tailing down a little bit. Uh, as well as some of the other coins. A little bit of, a little bit of blood in the, in the streets here today. Not something that we've seen too much in the last few you know, days or even weeks, but we are seeing some losses being posted. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the recent cease and desist from the state of Texas on BitConnect. And this time is actually pretty good. Put this BitConnect video out, the truth about BitConnect, which if you've not seen, I definitely recommend checking out. But I put that video out a few days ago and there were a few things I wanted to respond to that didn't really deserve its own video, but would work nicely in this kind of setting. Starting off with the story itself though, Texas issued a cease and desist to BitConnect, making several different orders. This is a look at the document itself. It's gonna be kind of complex. You can read it, I'll put a link in the description below, but Generally speaking, it goes through all of what's going on with BitConnect and why they've come to the conclusion that BitConnect should not be allowed in the state. This document goes point by point as to why they are issuing this cease and desist. Now, this ultimately culminates in them making some conclusions of law. These include that they are not registered uh, with the securities commissioner and they are securities and that they are also engaging in fraud as well as making offers containing statements that are materially misleading or otherwise likely to deceive the public. And then also Bis respondent BitConnect's conduct, acts, and practices threaten immediate and irreparable public harm, as well as the foregoing violations constitute basis for the issuance of an emergency cease and desist order. So, a lot to kind of unravel there. What I do think is kind of interesting is that they're defining BitConnect as a security. And that's one of the reasons why they're banning it in Texas. I do think as someone who's not a lawyer, but it seems this way, that this kind of opens the door for maybe some other more legitimate coins to get banned because if they're just banning it based on it being a security and not being registered, there are probably many projects that would fall into that legal framework. However, the more interesting part here is that the state of Texas believes that BitConnect is engaging in fraud. They are publicly trying to mislead people. They are saying false information. They're going after people and causing harm to them or eventual harm to them. That's what the state's saying. I want to address some of the comments I got in my BitConnect video that a lot of BitConnect fans had to say. And the first one is that, you're just a jealous hater because we've been making all this money and I have never been scammed by BitConnect. And that's true. That's actually the way that, that Ponzi's work. For the first, you know, however long in the Ponzi, there's really two phases to Ponzi schemes. There's the, the buildup, the, the growth of the Ponzi, and then the eventual collapse. If people were getting scammed at the start of a Ponzi, then 
it wouldn't work because people would be like, hey, where's my money? And then it wouldn't be paid out. The way Ponzi schemes work is that at the start, they all, they're all fine. Everyone gets paid and that's what caused it to grow. And then the moment that all of a sudden it can no longer sustain itself, there's not enough money in the system, there are no new people driving money into it that allow everyone else to get their money back, that's when things shut off, the Ponzi unravels, and people lose their money. So it's not going to be like one guy gets scammed a little bit, someone gets scammed over there. It's going to be everyone's cool, it's all fine until the switch is flipped, and then it's all over. I also got a lot of comments about the 1% guaranteed daily returns. And I do want to issue a correction here that it is not guaranteed 1% daily returns. They strongly imply it's 1% daily returns, but then the fine print, they guarantee only a paltry 120% a year, basically nothing. Now, if you're new to investing and crypto is the first thing you've been in, you might say, that doesn't sound ridiculous. I see coins go off all the time. Sure, but those have risk. If it's saying there is no risk, you can never get close to those types of returns. If you're investing in BitConnect and you believe in it, I'm gonna make one last pitch here because we can only do this so much, but I wanna try and help people. I'm telling you that I really believe this is a Ponzi scheme. The state of Texas believes this is a Ponzi scheme. Many of the biggest personalities in the space, like Vitalik Buterin and Charlie Lee think this is a Ponzi scheme. There are many reputable people that are telling you to not do this. And I know you've made money so far and you wanna keep going. But the thing is, that's how it works until it doesn't. I've got to say, as more came out about this and as Texas issued this cease and desist, I thought maybe we might see a little backpedaling from some of the BitConnect gang. But oh boy, was I wrong. It's, it's nothing. It's some FUD. It's, some, it's a little bit of ammo for the FUD. All this is FUD. It's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Don't let Texas, don't let the government shut you down. Governments are pussies, bro. Going forward, I think that this is actually a positive for BitConnect. They haters. They mad because we making money. Right? Get that cheese, bro! I don't want to spend too much time on this subject, but, but we got to talk about Crypto Nick again. In his most recent video, he tells his viewers that the cease and deceased cease and deceased order is not a big deal at all. He also advises his viewers to download a VPN so that they can still use the BitConnect platform. If you do live in the U.S., do uh, it's not the U.S., in Texas, do not, you know, you know, stop you know, investing into the platform. If anything, just get a VPN. I have Express VPN, which I pay a hundred bucks for. I don't really use it that often, but you know, I've, there's a certain site that I'm restricted on. I could use the VPN and get access. So if you really are that paranoid about it and you live in Texas, just download a VPN. It's not that big of a deal. I expect BitConnect to continue to operate normally here and nothing's really gonna happen whatsoever. I think this shows Nick's true colors, despite the fact that Texas is trying to get rid of this from their state. He's telling the people in Texas to go use it, go keep using BitConnect. You gotta stay with the program. Nick, the time has come. I know you've made a lot of money from BitConnect and you're trying to promote more loans, but this is over. You can't just put a who cares thumbnail on your video and pretend nothing's happening. It's all coming to an end and you're out there getting your viewers money taken and put into this Ponzi scheme. It's not happened yet, but it's a matter of time. Protect your viewers and do the right thing. I don't want to see you end up in jail. Wait, actually, wait, can, can 17 year olds go to jail? 17 year olds accused of crimes are currently still charged and treated as adults. I don't want to see you end up going to jail. At the end of the video, I also stumbled across this absolute gem. Nick, what's the difference between private key and public key? So on your, um, here, let's see. Actually, I probably shouldn't show anything from my blockchain wallet because if I do click on settings, it will show a lot of, uh, you know, private information. But I'm not really exactly too sure what a public key is. I know I use it to log into my blockchain wallet, but most wallets, you will not need your public key to log in or anything like that. There's no shame in not knowing much about crypto and not knowing that a public key is sort of your identity out there when you send it or receive a transaction and that your private key is what you use to sign the transaction so that only you can send your coins. That's fine. But what if I told you someone that didn't know that was offering a $500 informational course on crypto? That's right, guys. Sign up for your Bitcoin Mastery, the ultimate program to a six-figure cryptocurrency income today. I'm not really exactly too sure what a public key is. Next up, Bank of America's branch Merrill Lynch, which is the investing arm 
of Bank of America is not going to allow customers to invest their money into a Bitcoin fund. According to an article from Coindesk, Merrill Lynch, the brokerage arm of Bank of America, has blocked financial advisors and clients from trading in Bitcoin-related investments. The ban extends to clients trading in Grayscale's Bitcoin Investment Trust, a fund led by Bitcoin entrepreneur Barry Silber. The decision to block access to the fund was due to concerns about the, quote, suitability and eligibility standards of this product, end quote. An internal memo circulated to approximately 17,000 advisors states. According to the Wall Street Journal, the bank has extended a ban on recently launched Bitcoin futures contract. A Washington Street Journal source said Merrill Lynch put the policy in place on December 8th, just two days prior to the launch of Bitcoin futures. When reached for comment, Barry Silbert said, We look forward to speaking with Merrill Lynch and addressing any questions or concerns they have about the Bitcoin Investment Trust. We are unaware of any similar policies at other brokerage firms. Now, it's really tough to say what this is going to mean for Bitcoin. I can say that Bank of America tends to have stricter policies, particularly when a few years ago they had a bad case where they owed a lot of money in fines. I think they might be trying to be more strict about their overall policies. I can personally say that when I invested money on Merrill Lynch to try and get a small bonus for investing through their platform, they canned me and banned my bank account and held my money hostage with no comment. No one even talked to me. I'm an American. I like banks. Just want a bank there. I don't think in isolation this is a very big deal. But the question is, will other banks come on board and start to block Bitcoin-related investment options or even block transactions with, with well-known exchanges like Coinbase? If that happens, it could be a disaster for Bitcoin. Now, we've seen other banks take some not-so-great stances towards Bitcoin including JP Morgan, where the CEO, Jamie Dimon, said the currency is, quote, a fraud and said people who invest in it are, quote, stupid. Let's actually take a look at that video from this CNBC article. Cryptocurrencies and digital currencies, you know, I think, are also fine. You know, JP Morgan moves $6 trillion around the world every day. We don't do it in cash. It's done digitally. Yeah. If it can be done digitally with the blockchain, so be it. But it'll still be a dollar cryptocurrency. What I have an issue with is a non-fiat cryptocurrency dollar. So crypto, uh, sterling, euro, yen, they're all fine. I don't personally understand the value of something that has no actual value. You all can do whatever you want, and I don't care. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right. That sounds definitive. Bitcoin hit a new high today. It just I, I could care less what Bitcoin trades for, how it trades, why it trades, who trades it. If you're stupid enough to buy it, you'll pay the price for it one day. Great point there. People that are stupid enough to buy Bitcoin are going to have to pay for it. And that price is $16,819, so not going to be cheap. He also did say that it could hit 100000 before it crashed to zero, and then all kinds of traditional banking uh, problems. What I found interesting from that sentence, though, was that he said that he didn't understand how it can have value. We're seeing the CEO of one of the largest banks in the entire world not understand that currency has value because people believe in it, because people will buy and sell it. It has value because we do say that it has value. U.S. dollars are backed by full faith and credit of the U.S. banking system. That doesn't mean that they're back to gold. It doesn't mean that they're back to anything. That dollar is only worth something because our government says that it does have that value. But what's to stop millions of people around the world to say that something else has value? There's no reason to stop that at all. And that's exactly what we're seeing with Bitcoin. Now, it might feel a little bit worse. You know, the U.S. government seems powerful and strong, like a beacon of light well, or darkness, depending on where you are, but strong. And, and if they say it has value, then it has value. And for sure, the U.S. government is massive and very strong. And that's why the dollar is a lot more stable than these currencies. But that does not mean that other things can't also have value if we agree that they do. So I understand that if you're really set and entrenched on traditional types of money, you might not like crypto. And that's totally your own prerogative. You get to decide what you invest in. But if you understand the idea that it has value because we say that it does and that we believe in math and algorithms over people, then that's what's happening at the heart of Bitcoin. This isn't a huge story, but it is something that I wanted to mention. There is a hedge fund called Block Tower that has raised over $140 million for a cryptocurrency-based fund. As cryptocurrencies evolve and grow, we're going to see more and more people jump into the hedge fund space because guess what? There is a ton of money to be made, especially in large quantities where these funds can find ways to get good deals. Apparently, there's also an ex-member of Goldman Sachs coming in to help out Block Tower. 
According to reports by Morgan Stanley, there are now over 100 crypto-related funds with assets worth over $2 billion. Institutional investors are now finding it easier to speculate in cryptocurrencies, assisted by the two major Chicago-based exchanges, which launched Bitcoin futures contracts late last year. This is an extremely good thing. Now, I'm not saying that's going to work out for the best in all areas. Obviously, these funds can short Bitcoin, but... Just getting skin in the game, getting more exposure, having more capital available to be invested into the space, the more money that starts to surround it and get into the system, the better it's going to be for cryptocurrency on the whole. I will say though, watch out because there could be some serious market manipulation. There are not rules in place for what people can do. I expect this to get even more wild westy as we go along, but we're definitely gonna be staying tuned. And finally, our feature story of the day, Co-founder of Ripple, Chris Larson, has an estimated net worth of over $100 billion based on the current value of Ripple. This would make him the richest man in the entire world for creating Ripple. Now, that's obviously insane. That's so much money. But some of you guys might be a little confused. If you check Coin Market Cap, you can see that its market cap is way smaller than Bitcoin. So how do you get to that? number the number that you see there is the value of all circulating ripple but there are more ripple in existence 62 billion ripple are still in the control of ripple labs and they have also said that they're going to be releasing most of that month by month for the next several years starting at some point this year so we're going to see an influx of a lot of ripple into the ecosystem and that's why the total market cap of Ripple, if you consider all of the Ripple that are not part of the circulating supply, actually would be higher than Bitcoin. The problem for Larson though, is that if he sold even just a small portion of his fortune, the amount of Ripple that would then go into the community, that would go into the exchanges and where people are trading, would be so great that it would have a drastic effect on the price dropping it substantially. This is where the idea of market volume becomes important. Now, I'm not an expert trader by any stretch, I'm not even a trader by any stretch. I tend to just buy more in fundamental value and hold based on what I believe long run will, will succeed. But the volume in the market matters a lot. If there are many people buying and selling, then it won't change drastically based on large volumes being bought or sold. This is much better when you have a very large position in something because if you do have to sell, there are many buyers willing to take that price. In much more shallow, uh, in much much lower volume and shallower markets, it means that only a few purchases might change the price somewhat drastically. So when you look at Ripple, let's take a look at what the volume looks like right now so you can get kind of an idea. In the last day, we've seen around 7 billion in volume for Ripple. Now just imagine if someone tried to sell 10 billion or 5 billion billion dollars worth of ripple what that would do to the price in fact if you go to any exchange you can see how the order the order book is you can see what's open and what, what bids are out there what asks are out there and you can see what people are buying and selling for if someone came through and tried to sell at that quantity it would absolutely crater the currency and cause a massive drop so he's not really able to sell and he's also promised to sell according to this timeline basically but it's important to also understand that when there is that much other currency out there, that much more of the currency out there, it can have negative effects on the price. I know that there are a lot of Ripple fans that come in here and get angry. I understand that there are Ripple that do get burned on transactions, but there aren't very many because the fees are so low, which is a good thing, but not many Ripple are being burnt. And I also understand that there is a timeline for the release of these Ripple. So I understand those things. Those things are good. I, I'm okay with those things, but it doesn't change the, the, the fact that there is a ton of supply not in circulation. And as that is released in the marketplace, there will be a price devaluation based on there being more availability. The more Ripple there are in existence, the more Ripple there are in circulation, the less the price will be. That's just simply the way that things work. If I tried to sell you a baseball card and there were only a thousand in existence made by a legitimate brand and it was signed by the player or whatever, then that would have a lot of value. But now let's say that there were 10 million. It's not nearly as big of a deal. So the supply matters a lot when it comes to supply and demand. You can make the counter argument that for many people that are that wealthy, particularly when their wealth comes from shares of a company, that if they did try and sell off that much of the company, then they would take a hit and their net worth would go down. So maybe he's in a similar situation as many other people, but I don't think it's quite the same. Seven billion in volume in the last 24 hours, while being a very huge number, is not anywhere close to the kind of volume that we see on the New York Stock Exchange 
or when it comes to real estate or any or more of these traditional markets that have trillions of dollars in them this is a new industry with not as much volume comparatively so that makes his net worth not quite as real to me there are good arguments to be made both ways on if this guy is the richest man in the world or not but the point is he's up there and if ripple goes up much more he's gonna have it on lock this does start to bring up an interesting question that i want you guys to answer in the comments what's the amount of money that's okay for someone to have what's an amount of money where you think it starts to become unfair is there a point do you think if someone has half the money in the world that's fine is there some point where maybe some type of regulation should be set where people can't just have uh, you know a, a a certain number of the money supply or is everything fair game is it all just part of the game and we're trying to ramp the score let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below that's gonna do it here for me once again guys hit that subscribe button if you're stopping by we got a lot of content coming up thanks for joining and i'll see you soon